Well, that's right. It's time for The Drop Zone with William Hill. What we're going to do here, Simon, you're well aware of it, is I will spin the dial, which you see in front of me, and we'll see where the penny drops on one of today's three topics. And Simon will then take it away. Here we go. Spin the dial. Okay, okay. What have we got? We have got Simon Jordan. What is your take on this? This will be interesting. Tottenham Hotspur and the sacking of Jose Mourinho. So this time yesterday, you and I were still trying to get our heads around it. Danny Murphy was sitting in that chair. Yeah. We broke the news live in TalkSport. Jose Mourinho's been sacked by Tottenham Hotspur. So we uh, threw the kitchen sink at that one. Mm. But the dust has settled somewhat. Overnight, you, you had time to think, why did Levy choose yesterday to sack Mourinho? Yeah, I mean, I thought about it and I thought to myself, irrespective of my view whether 17 months in a job is enough to have given him the opportunity to do what he needs to do, the way it was going for Tottenham wasn't going in the right direction. Champions League wasn't really likely to happen this season. They've got a new stadium. The whole world is falling around football financially, the European Super League challenges that we've been talking about endlessly. And I look at Mourinho and think, I think Tottenham didn't fancy him anymore, irrespective of what happened on Sunday. So if they won the League Cup, I still think Tottenham would have dismissed Jose Mourinho. And I think, well, why would you do it before then? And I look at Daniel and I look at Joe Lewis and I think, if Mourinho wins that cup, then he will have done effectively what he was brought in to do, which is win something. If they fired him then, not only would he get the, his, his contract paid off, is there a possibility, like Antonio Conte, that he would then sue Tottenham for unfair dismissal on the basis of that he had done precisely what he was brought in to do? Because Conte did sue Chelsea. Not only did he get the money that he was owed by Chelsea for the rest of his contract, irrespective of the fact he was working for somebody else, he also got another big bag of money. And my feelings, looking at the, looking at the animals that were involved, is there's a possibility that winning the League Cup means nothing to Tottenham and it means less than getting rid of Jose Mourinho and not having to pay him any further money as a result of him achieving something he was brought in to do, which was win a piece of silverware. So that's where my mind sort of alighted to when I was sitting there thinking, I know Daniel. I know some of his thinking. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was in part mm. behind it. Because Danny Murphy sat there yesterday. One of the first things Danny said is they're in a cup final this yep. weekend. But a cup final that would that delivers nothing really economically for Spurs, is it? You know, Spurs are one of these big six that are chasing after big banks of money. They've just built a billion pound stadium. Right, they probably lost 150 million. They made world record profits two years ago of 137 million quid. They've probably given all that back plus interest. You know, in terms of the money they've lost over the last 18 months. Mm. Right, you look forward now. Football's going forward again on another landscape. I've got my little son potentially going into a nursery, being told that my partner's going to wear a mask for a year. So the world's not going to turn as quickly. So football's not going to get full stadiums on that logic. So all of a sudden, Spurs have got to say, "What? Well, how are we going to?" be successful if we're out of the Champions League is this guy actually going to get us where we want to go the whole the whole landscape around it is building up the Mourinho the anti-Mourinho campaign that I rail against is in full throttle now he's disenfranchising the players if, if you if you believe what's being said in the media our achievements on the pitch are nowhere near where we want them to be we've got this new stadium we were a very polished brand and all of a sudden everything is coming around my ears Mourinho isn't giving me the gold dust. He isn't giving me the Hollywood moment that Mourinho looked like he was going to give me when we did All or Nothing and looked like he was going to give me when Gareth Bale rocked into the scene. These moments are not giving me Tottenham PLC, the brand, the imagery, the gold dust, the pizzazz, mm. the effervescence that I thought it was. So what's the point of having him here? Why do I need him here? I need someone here that's going to give me that. And if I, if I, if I win a League Cup with him... Maybe this bugger's going to sue me afterwards if I fire after that. And on an interim basis, in comes former player Ryan Mason. Yeah. You know him, I know yeah, him. Yeah, a very nice lad as well. Still in 29. Yeah. I think he's going to be the youngest manager to manage yeah. uh, in the Premier League. Yeah. At 29. Uh, taking over until the end of the season. Um, we found that out this morning. What's the thinking behind that? Well, you tell me what the thinking is behind that because clearly they attach no value to a manager coming in and managing this group of players. Because with the greatest respect in the world to Ryan Mason, he is a lovely, educated young man I've had the pleasure of doing a couple of shows with. Mm. So he speaks very well, he thinks very well, yeah. but managing a Premier League group of players that, that ultimately is beyond his experience level is going to be a challenge. So effectively, what Levy is saying is let the players run themselves. Yeah, but does it not tell us that they can't get the manager they want to bring in at this moment? It might tell you that as well. 
it may well be t it may well be a timing issue or that ultimately that they've got a manager in mind or it may well be that they haven't got a manager in mind at this moment in time or they haven't done their business with another manager and that they're reserving the right to take their time and look at the landscape once this season is finished but they're prepared potentially to write off this season because if Ryan comes in and he can't control this group of players and the situation gets worse right and they drop down the league even further every time they drop down the league they lose two and a half million quid in payments from the Premier League as far as merit payments are concerned so we're happy to perhaps sacrifice winning the League Cup and an entry into Europe next year we're happy to sacrifice the finances around a new manager coming in and being able to get a grip of it we'll put Ryan Mason in place because there are bigger pictures that we've got to, to manage it, it, it's a very strange one but I I can think of no other reason why sure. Mourinho would be taken sure. out before a League Cup final. If you're Daniel Levy and the Tottenham board, does the new man come from any of these uh, one, two, three, four, five bookies' favourites who have emerged this Tuesday lunchtime? Julian Nagelsmann in Germany, Brendan Rodgers, Eddie Howe, Rafa Benitez, Nuno Espirito Santo. Any of those five going to step up to the plate and do it? Right. Um, give me the five again. Julian Nagelsmann. He'll go to Bayern Munich. Brendan Rodgers. Very good. I don't think you'll get him out of Leicester. Eddie Howe. Mm, too big a job for him. Rafa Benitez. Why? Yeah, let him go back to Newcastle. They'll love him up why not? Why not? Because I think Rafa Benitez, his star, is far less than it once was before. When he went to Real Madrid, he couldn't cut it there. He can cut it at a certain level of club. He's a very decent manager, but I think Spurs need something very different now because they've got close and they've really receded back now. They need someone to really get hold of them. They need a Klopp to get hold of them to do what Klopp did at Liverpool to a Tottenham. So what's the last one? Uh, Nuno Espirito Santo. There's your guy. There's your guy. Why? Because he's an outstanding manager and he's got all the energy, vitality and determination. But can you get him out of Wolves? There's your guy. With his connections to... With, with his connection to George Mendes. agents, with his attitude towards players, with the style of football that he wants to play of his conviction he doesn't care about anything and anyone besides his team look at the run-ins he used to have with Warnock when they were back in the day in the championship he's a proven leader of men and he's built a football team in Wolves that have knocked on the door without quite the same livery heritage and resource there's your guy bear in mind can't uh, get him though Ryan, Ryan Mason is seriously good pals with Harry Kane yeah, if Ryan Mason and Tottenham win this thing this weekend does Ryan put himself in the frame no no, not, not, not really, no. He puts himself in a frame for cementing his relationship with Tottenham as a meaningful member of their coaching staff, a bit like Duncan Ferguson did at Everton before Carlo Ancelotti came in. Yeah, I get that. But, you know, you need serious people to do serious jobs and the experience comes to play. And Tottenham are a big football club that's a model that needs to be rebooted again because two or three years ago they were going in really the right way and they're not now. And I'm not de demeaning the fact that people have to start somewhere. But when Frank Lampard took the Chelsea job, I sat here two years ago and said, too early, too quick, not ready. I wasn't happy that they gave him the job and then took him out after 18 months because I thought it was ridiculous. Why put him in in the first place if you're going to do that? But in the instance of Ryan Mason, you'd not be doing Ryan Mason a favour any more with respect than Derby have done Wayne Rooney a favour. Mm. Because Wayne Rooney, whilst I might have been a bit extreme to say, look, if you want to get Derby relegated, put Wayne Rooney in charge, the only reason they ain't going to get relegated is because Rotherham keep losing games for the four games they've got in hand in Derby, yeah. or Derby would be getting relegated which is what I said so you've got to get guys in, into a job that can actually give them a chance and the guy that you would give to, to, uh, to that Tottenham should look to of that is, list, is no, of that list of is that no list. and I hate to be able to say that to Wolves fans because they won't want to hear that and I'm not advocating that but you gave me a list of five and which one would I choose Do I, two other names not on the list do they come into it the aforementioned Lampard or Stephen Gerrard no I don't think so I think that uh, that Frank is still to earn his right to manage a club of that level and I think he's got to rebuild a little bit with maybe a smaller echelon club a, a, a risk would be Crystal Palace for Palace to take Lampard would be a risk because he's an unproven commodity although we all like Frank and we think it'll be the mm -hmm. end result and Stephen G right. and Stephen Gerrard <laughs> look I don't know enough about what Stephen's done at Rangers besides dominate a league that's a poor league he has overturned Celtic but Celtic have been in decline it's a two horse league bring him into the Premier League it's a different animal. I think he needs more experience. Brendan Rodgers was already a packaged manager mm. when he went up to Celtic. He had already done things with Liverpool, gone away, rebuilt his reputation, and back he came. Stephen is learning his trade in a league that affords him more opportunities in the Premier League. And he goes into the, the Champions League with Rangers. And they'll get knocked out in the Champions League. Oh, we'll see about that.